Lonnie, uh, I, I want to go back to the last stimulus bill because there was a general consensus among both Democrats and Republicans that something, something big needed to be done and it needed to be done fast and the long-term consequences didn't necessarily need to be hashed out and debated in that moment. It seems that this time around, things are a little bit different. You have some of the fiscal conservatives who are a little bit more concerned about the deficit spending. And even on the Democrat side, you have uh, a lot of folks in the, in the Democratic Party who seem to be pushing uh, certain items that they ne weren't necessarily able to get done in the first round. Do you think we're going to get that type of, the kind of consensus that we had on the first couple of bills in this one? I do not. I don't think the consensus uh, remains going to be broad. I think we're going to end up with a very narrow package that addresses just really some, some matters of, of immediate concern. Uh, look, the last package was the function of, of the, you know, sort of severe economic crisis uh, that we were in. It was a function of the fact that people felt on Capitol Hill and the administration, they needed to work together to get this done. Uh, where we are now is a different place. Not that the economic recovery is going gangbusters, but I think people feel like they've got a little bit more breathing room, a little bit more space. And so you're starting to see a little bit more of that ideological retrenchment. You're seeing a little bit more of Democrats saying, we want a bigger package, we want more spending, we want more for government. And you're seeing Republicans saying, look, there are fiscal consequences and we don't want unemployment insurance to extend in a way that's going to inhibit people from actually going back into the labor force. So those factors, I think, are playing a much larger role. How much is the election playing a role as well, Lani? Oh, it's huge. I mean, you can't divorce this from the election. We are within 100 days now of the November elections. Uh, the political factor of the Democrats sort of looking at this and saying, how can we play this to our advantage? The Republicans wanting to play it to President Trump's advantage. Those are definitely factors, which is why I think at the end of the day, we are going to end up with a pretty limited approach. And I think that's, you know, roughly where uh, Mitch McConnell's head is at. That's roughly where a few other senators, their heads are at. Uh, but, you know, it's going to be tough to get there. We're going to have a lot of, of twists and turns before we do. Lonnie, it's interesting. Every guest that we have on talking about stimulus, I've been asking this question to try to get a gauge on really where we stand within small businesses who have been saying that it's been tough to get workers back to work because they're incentivized to stay home, given many make more on $600 a week than, let's say, $200 a week or so. Where is, you know, where are we with the debate? What is your research showing you about $600 a week versus two or perhaps somewhere in the middle at, let's say, four? Yeah, this really is the essence of the problem, which is that the current structure is creating some disincentives for work. Uh, but there's a political challenge here, right? Because Democrats are saying, you've got people who are still unemployed, we need to support them. Republicans are making a more nuanced argument, which is they want to support them, but they want to create a pathway back to work for as many Americans as possible. That is not a campaign slogan that you can put on a bumper sticker. That is much harder for Republicans to make the case on. So even though substantively, I think Republicans, their heads are in the right place on this, which is can we transition down to some amount that's then going to put the onus on states to put in place a more sophisticated unemployment insurance system, that is very difficult to explain. So at the end of the day, Republicans may get pressured politically mm. into accepting more than they want to, whether that's $400 or $600 a month, that's, that that's remains to be seen. But I think Republicans are in a tough political position on this particular argument, even though substantively, I think they're in the right place. So, Lonnie, I mean, you've worked on campaigns before, so you kind of understand how people vote. I'm curious. I mean, this COVID pandemic and the recession and everything that came out of it, it expo exposed a, a lot of gaps in our policy here in the United States, both at the federal level and at the state and local level. Our voters, though, are they in tune to that? Are they in tune to those policy mistakes enough that they're actually going to vote uh, vote on that issue? I think what they're voting on is a perception of competency more than anything else. They're, they're not voting on, uh, you know, how elegant the unemployment insurance solution is or whether we have uh, liability protection, although those are very important things, certainly for job creators and entrepreneurs across the country. What voters are worried about is who is actually getting the job done? Who seems to be doing this competently? A and right now, look, there's a case to be made that both sides are falling down on the job. Both Republicans and Democrats can blame the other side. And that's going to be frustrating for voters. But at the end of the day, I think what's hurt the president's polling numbers, for example, over the last several weeks, is the perception that he has not handled this crisis in a competent fashion. I think that, above all, is the issue voters are paying attention to.
Indeed, particularly as it's been Republican states that have of late been hit so hard by uh, the ongoing wave one even of COVID. I'm interested, Lani, in, on, on a, any optimism you have for compromise here or where a deal can get done. We have Chuck Schumer, live pictures of him, and basically blasting this plan. It feels like he's saying Republicans delay on aid plans will damage the U.S. He's speaking about how they will offer piecemeal ideas for stimulus. The Republican plan won't provide enough relief. He's saying they must pass the Democrat stimulus plan overall. And he feels that with that, you're going to continue to see, well, poverty made worse. What hope do you have for Nancy Pelosi, who's saying they are going to try and find common ground, finding any common ground? I think this is going to follow the very typical Washington playbook we've seen over these last several years, which is both sides are going to continue to posture. Both sides are going to make re remarks and comments that seem broadly disingenuous because, look, we're not passing the Democrats' plan through the Senate uh, in the same way Democrats aren't going to agree to Mitch McConnell's plan. So what's going to happen is both sides are going to posture. It's going to go down to some kind of a deadline, most likely when Congress is going to leave town again for the August uh, recess period. And then they're going to get something done that's very limited. And that limited package will probably include something around unemployment insurance, something around liability protection. That might even be it. Or something around state aid and something around what Republicans really want. I mean, it's going to be a very limited agreement. We're not going to have some grand bargain here. This is really going to be down to brass tacks when we get there in a couple weeks. Well, keeping us updated on the latest, as always, is Lonnie Chen, Hoover Institution Research Fellow and the Stanford University Director of Domestic Policy Studies. Thank you.